When Mildred Dresselhaus started work at MIT's Lincoln Labs in 1960, she decided to get a firm grasp on a material that others saw as primarily useful in pencils. I got into carbon science because nobody was working in it. I was happy to look for some area that was not so popular where I controlled my own destiny. At Lincoln Labs, and by 1967 as a professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Dresselhaus saw that at the scale of atoms and molecules, carbon, in its form as graphite, has a unique layered structure, with nature's strongest bonds within each layer and weakest bonds between the layers. So I had this material that uh, I wound up studying that was unusual. Dresselhaus realized she could dramatically change graphite's electrical properties by sandwiching other elements between the layers, a pioneering insight that guided others to the invention of lithium-ion batteries. But she was going deeper still into carbon. One day, unexpected, you know, just a student knocks on my door looking for a thesis topic. Well, I said, I'm going to give you a homework problem. It was May 1993, and Dresselhaus proposed, and then helped prove, that by minutely engineering graphite's atomic level structure, it's possible to produce carbon nanostructures with unique electrical, thermal, and chemical properties. We didn't even know what journal to send it into. There was no, it was very confusing. When you start a new field, you're in no man's land. Her patents in the manufacturing of carbon nanostructures, including nanowires and nanothermoelectric devices for turning waste heat into usable electricity, form a cornerstone of the nanotechnology revolution. Five decades later, the queen of carbon is an inventor who's turned the stuff of the lowly pencil into a powerhouse material of the future.